Hi everyone, it's Tarnished Treasures and today I'm going to answer some of the questions that you posed to me on the community tab. The other night, I don't know what it was, I got this whim, I said what questions do you have for me if I were to do a QA? and a and then the questions started rolling in and I thought, oh now I need to answer them. Uh, so there are some questions that um, are personal information, I don't like to share them um, on public videos and my husband doesn't like me to share that information. Um, so I won't, I understand the curiosity with many of the questions, but just please understand and respect why I won't be answering them. The first was a question about my art ability. Um, and my dad was an artist, so he had a studio and art supplies at the house and we always went to the museum and galleries. So I was just surrounded by it and really enjoyed it. She also asked if I have a piece of art from my childhood, and yes, this is my first clay sculpture from first grade. It is a brown cow. It is missing an ear. I think it fell on my parents' deck. And the funny story with this is that we made it and underglazed it, and once she fired it, uh, we had to clear glaze it. And I guess I talked too much in class, and I remember, clear glazing this and the teacher coming around who I loved came over and she said oh no make sure you're getting clear glaze everywhere and I was like oh yeah yeah I am I am and I just kept on talking and so once it was fired again it's shiny everywhere except I missed this entire side because I was talking <laughs> she also asked if I had any art from high school um, or college and I do it's just at uh, school. Um, if I were not an art teacher, what would I do? And I would love to be an interior designer. Also interested in restoring things, so like a construction aspect as well. My favorite place to visit, I don't have one. Maybe in the future I will find one, but as of now I have not traveled much, so I don't have one. Um, my favorite thrift find, really hard question, but um, I do like to find the old antique jewelry boxes with the beveled glass and older unique perfume bottles. And I think it's because the story there um, of these items being vanity items. And when I talk about like my favorite styles of art and artists, like there's a, a correlation behind it. But um, I know when I find a lot of thrift things, people will always say, don't you always wonder about who used this or that? And um, when I think about it the most, I think I think about it with the perfume bottles for some reason. Like somebody who saved up money and got this like beautiful, you know, smelling perfume and like the special events that they would have worn it to. And if it was their signature scent, um, I just feel like that was like a luxury probably for some people at, you know, whenever these perfumes were around and my mind thinks about it with those. So let me grab some of those. So there's this one that's a souvenir. Um, you can you can find them on eBay with the uh, orange water perfume. And I got that at the same estate that I got this perfume bottle. And I just love it. I love the paint flaking off. I feel like if the paint were all on there, it wouldn't be the same, but it just shows the age. And it's a souvenir of oh, Miami Beach, Florida, but I've seen them for all different states. And then uh, the jewelry boxes, oh, which way does it go? <laughs> And then it's got that silk in there that has shattered. So I'd be very happy if I could find stuff like that out thrifting all the time. <laughs> and the last question from this person is, who is my favorite artist or piece of art? And I would never be able to just pick one because there are different artists linked to different times in my education and my career and even the media that I choose. So, uh, I believe, you know, I could probably say from first grade, it was Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night, when your teacher shows you the beautiful swirls in the sky and those gorgeous blues, it just hooks you. And then from going to the museum with my dad, I loved seeing the sculpture by Degas of the Little Dancer. And also I loved the Vanitas paintings, those um, trompe l'oeil, hyper-realistic still life that show just like the cycle of life and death. And that theme has really uh, shown itself in a lot of my artwork for a very long time. 
Joseph, I discovered Joseph Cornell in college and um, he is the one credited for assemblage. And while my artwork doesn't look like his, if I hadn't have learned about him, I would not have discovered, you know, this art style and started making assemblages, you know, decades ago. I also really liked, um, and still do, <laughs> you don't stop liking artists, um, Andrew Wyeth and Christina's World, and then being able to go to his museum and see his last tempera called Goodbye. And more recently interested in performance art and um, an artist, uh, Marina Amramovich. I always have to say it slow. <laughs> and her piece, The Artist is Present. Um, and I could go on and on and on, but um, a lot of those are well-known artists and artwork. And it's because when I was learning, we didn't have the internet. So you had books and you had museums. And now you can go on Instagram and Google and see art from every corner of the world, which is wonderful, but a little overwhelming. Um, so sometimes I try and avoid that so I don't get overwhelmed. Okay, so moving on to a new person and a new question. Will I ever make a book of my art compositions to sell? And years ago, I actually had started because there was some website online that you could put pictures and text into to create your own book. But whatever their templates were, just weren't easy for me to format and do what I wanted to do. So I just kind of got frustrated and gave up. Um, and now it's years and years and years later, I'm sure that there's a site that's easier to use, but now it's more of the time to do it. Um, and it could happen in the future. I have definitely thought about it. It just hasn't happened yet. Okay, another question. What is my dream thrift find? Uh, some type of jewelry, um, Victorian jewelry, morning jewelry, um, a lover's eye pin or some type of memento mori jewelry. I have seen it online. I could probably go to an antique store and find some, but to be able to be at an estate sale or a yard sale and find a piece like that would be pretty awesome. The last question that I'll answer for this video is how do I keep from over collecting? And I do uh, try and limit what I have in a space and I like to store um, what I decorate with in a room in that room. So once a box gets full or, you know, the cabinet, the, the doors under the cabinet are full, I need to go through and decide what to get rid of. And the nice thing about thrifting is you don't spend too much for the stuff. So it's kind of like an upgrade game. Um, oh, I found this new tablecloth or this new monogrammed napkin set. Let me go look at what I have in my napkin drawer and whatever's holy or stained or I might turn it into an art supply now instead of a dinner napkin that's what I do so there's just a constant rotation and I think if you thrift you understand that that upgrade game um, thinking about linens like I find a tablecloth that's got red and white embroidered design I love it it's five dollars I use it and then six months later I'm at another sale and I find one that's like red and white and has a monogram on it I'm like awesome this one seems more unique to me i'll get rid of that other one that i had it served a nice purpose i could donate it i could sell it you know sometimes people make profit so they, <laughs> they basically make some money and have something they like even better i'm also lucky because i can use when i purchase these things probably half of the haul is stuff i'm going to collect or decorate with and the other half is art supplies but after a while if i'm doing that upgrade game um, some fabric that i have might become an art supply now and i've got my classroom that i can take it to that's large and i've got a space that i can store it i have a space that i can offer it to my students to use so i feel like that's how i'm able to keep things under control Thanks for clicking on the video. Thanks for watching and listening. I hope it was interesting or entertaining. I will be answering more questions in other videos. Uh, so thank you very much for posing those questions to me. And I'll see you all in another video. Bye.